Hey everyone, it's so good to see you all. Thank you for joining me at DevOps Loop. Today we are going to be talking about why even DevOps? And I'm excited to be talking about this today because I've been at this for a while, like Maddie just said. And when I say I've been at this for a while, I mean I've been doing a lot of things, right? So I started out as a developer. I was a programmer. Actually, I started doing mainframes. So I was really kind of doing green screens. I was in the heart of systems, but then I was developing. I was programming. I was doing a lot of things with a lot of systems. And then I got pulled into supporting a lot of these systems, right? I was playing with routers and modems and internet and switches. I was doing a lot of things. And then I ended up on this really large project. And honestly, this was a project that was probably too big. We were trying to do too many things and we were building this system in the way that we used to build systems, which was doing a lot and then sprinting, right? And then doing a lot and then sprinting and doing a lot and then sprinting. And we were doing these seven day force marches and we were doing them for weeks and months and years at a time. And you know what happens when you do that? You kind of break computers and you break systems. And you know what else happens is you break people. And it's not a great way to build systems. It's not great for our systems and it's not great for our people. And while I was doing one of these really large projects, I was also in a PhD program. Zero out of 10 would not recommend. But I was looking at a bunch of the systems and the research and thinking there must be a better way. And at the same time, a bunch of folks were building systems in better ways and talking about it. And a bunch of folks were starting to do research in better ways and we were thinking there must be a better way. And so I actually changed my research almost overnight. It was over a weekend because I said there has to be a better way. I actually started my dissertation doing NLP and machine learning and, and early AI work. And I said there has to be a better way because we can't keep burning out people and burning out systems. And turns out DevOps is, you know, really the original hipster for well-being and sustainable work. By the way, I'll start talking about, you know, a bunch of studies and research. I know, shocker, you're surprised at a bunch of this. And I'll share out a bunch of my slides. We were kind of, you know, racing to get a bunch of this done. So I'll make sure I share my slides on the internet and Twitter. We'll make sure we share these out to a bunch of all of you. But when I say that DevOps is the original hipster for this, it really is. So Agile started as a way to help developers work more closely with the business and put out work in two week, inc week increments. And it really helped developers do work better. But the problem was that they were working in smaller bits and smaller pieces and doing work faster. But that work kind of built up and it started causing bottlenecks and breaking things for people that were downstream. Those folks that were downstream were operators. And so DevOps original name was actually Agile System Administration because we wanted to find ways to extend what we had learned from Agile into those sysadmin folks, right? How can we find a way to help this wonderful thing that we had learned about making work more sustainable, more resilient, more functional, make the culture better for everyone. So here's what we're going to talk about today. First, how DevOps helps us. And when I say helps us, I know a lot of time I give these talks and I talk about how it makes, you know, things, you know, two times better for the organization. But really, today we're going to talk about how it helps us as developers, as sysadmins, as SREs, as testers, how it helps us because really that's how this all started. So that's what we'll talk about first. And then we'll talk about how productivity is personal. There's no one size fits all. There's no one metric that matters. It really is 
something that we apply to us individually. And then we'll talk about tiny wins. How do we find tiny wins? It doesn't have to be this Herculean epic effort. We can do something individual. And then I'll talk about the future. What's the future of productivity and well-being, right? Okay, so those are the four things we'll talk about. So let's start with the first one. So when we do this DevOps, right? When we stir up tech and process and culture, we can develop better systems, right? So what does that look like? Now, the Accelerate State of DevOps report just came out. Shout out to the team at Dora who just released this amazing research. Uh, Dustin Smith is the principal investigator now. Uh, he and his team did this amazing work. So when we look at, you know, what are the impacts? What's possible when we do this work together? Uh, we think about four key metrics, right? We have two speed metrics and two stability metrics. So the speed metrics are lead time for changes. That's how long it takes to go from code commit to code running in production. And deployment frequency, how often do we push code, okay? And then we also have time to restore service. If and when something goes wrong, because it inevitably, inevitably will, right? Not sure if we're paying attention, but we've got some outages today. When I say today, this is always going to be today. So even if you're watching this on record, right, on playback, this is going to be happening. Um, so time to restore service and then change failure rate. So of the things that we push into production, what's the likelihood that it will, re will require intervention, right? How often does that happen? So when we look at these metrics in the 2021 report, I'm gonna peek at my notes really quick because I don't have these committed to memory just yet because the report just came out, the 2021 report. When we compare elite performers to low performers, Dora's latest research finds that elite performers have 973 times more frequent code deployments, okay? They also find over 6,500, they see 6,570 times faster lead time from commit to deploy. They see three times lower change fail rate, so what that means that changes are one third less likely to fail, and they see 6,570 times faster time to recover from incidents. It's amazing, right? By the way, I love that in their report this year, they point out for those, those really, really large numbers, it's not an editorial mistake. Those numbers are real. Now, what does, what does this mean for us, right? This isn't just about creating new features, right? It's not just for the business. This is for us too. When we have these improvements, when we can reach elite performance or even a smaller performance, right? When we make some type of improvement, it helps us reduce friction. We can stop repeating these mindless tasks. We can decrease our cognitive load. We can do our work easier. Now, why do we care about doing this work easier? It gives us brain space to think about our next problem or our next project. It creates space for us to do something fun, right? That's what's exciting. Now. What else do they find in the work this year? I'm super excited that, well, first of all, they've done a lot of fun things, so make sure you check out the report. But one thing in particular that I really loved in this 2021 report is that they find that DevOps improves developer well-being, right? So they dug into it because, you know, it's pandemic year, it's pandemic forever, right? Internal March has been tough. They find that a positive team culture mitigates burnout during challenging circumstances. It's been a tough year. They found that teams with an inclusive, generative culture were half as likely to experience burnout during the pandemic. I think that's huge. So in other years of the research, so in 2018, we found that improvements in automation and continuous delivery reduced deployment pain and burnout. So again, right, making these investments, whether it's time, money, or attention, really help us improve our own well-being, right? Improving process, culture, and automation is key. It really is about these holistic improvements. Now, some, so often I hear, yeah, that's surveys, survey data is, okay, fine. Well, you know what? Last year in GitHub's Octaverse, State of the Octaverse report, where we look at all of this massive sweet, sweet data, <laughs> we found very, very similar results. So here we looked at what happens when you introduce automation to an open source repo. 
here, this is, you see this through actions. And what we found is that once an open source repo starts using actions on their pull requests, right? And pull requests are, are really a great source of collaboration and also speeding up through that pipeline. We see an 18% faster time to merge pull requests and 34% more pull requests are merged. So again, right, we're seeing this wonderful effect of using automation to kind of speed up that workflow. And then we can imagine once that workflow is sped up, you have kind of like unlocked this ability to do other work. Now, you don't have to only think about all or nothing things, right? It doesn't have to be epic. Uh, Joel Khalifa had this wonderful write-up about tiny wins, right? Because productivity can come from small things. Joel talks about tiny projects with big impact. Now, when I share out the slides, I'll inclu include a link here. And he has this wonderful screenshot from a tweet where, um, you know, one of my favorite examples is, you know, sometimes we might get confused between our base and our compare branches. So he adds this wonderful little graphic with an arrow. I love this because it helps us remember. Some people call these paper cuts. And throughout Joel's blog post, he talks about how some of these small, tiny wins are some of the most popular and most impactful productivity wins he's done. So just think of the small things that we can do and the big impact that they can have. Now, Q, imagine for yourselves an XKCD comic. I love XKCD. XKCD has my heart. And it's, it's one of my favorite ones, and it's like how often it takes to do the work and how much time we will save, right? Because remember, we want to be leveraging automation to save time for ourselves. And also, automating ourselves out of a job is the point, especially when we're automating ourselves out of repeatable work. That's what we want to do. The key is what we do with the time that we have reclaimed, right? Automation is not a threat. Automation is an opportunity. It frees us from this mind-numbing work. It saves us from this like cognitive, cognitive load that we have. It's this wonderful opportunity. So next up, remember, we're going to be talking about productivity. What does productivity look like? And I think this is such a big question for so many of us especially now, especially as we've been thinking about, you know, working from home. When we can't just walk down the hall and see people sitting at their computers, what is productivity? Now, Shane O'Flynn posted this blog post and there's this quote that I really, really love. I'm gonna read it here. Charles Dickens, a tale of two cities begins. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Adapting Dickens' line to leading an engineering team during the global pandemic, I'd say, we're doing very well, we're barely hanging in there. I think it's important to realize that productivity is personal. Now, a quick TLDR from the 2020 State of the Octoverse, where again, as I mentioned, we can look at global developer productivity. Here's what we see, some patterns. Overall, our developer patterns matched prior years, plus anticipated growth which I think is sort of interesting because we were all thrown into this unanticipated chaos. Okay, then we looked at working days. How long are our working days? With a rough proxy. Uh, we looked at this as push window. So uh, your first push to your last push to your main branch. Um, it increased by 25 to 50 minutes. So are we just stretching out work maybe? So then we looked at work volume, measured as push volume. It didn't drop and in some cases it increased. So we're doing as much or more work. Then we looked at pull request merge times. They got up to seven hours faster in open source, up to four and a half hours faster in work contexts. So really this is a sign of increased collaboration. But again, these patterns don't reveal the whole story, right? That's not just productivity. Productivity is so much more. So. Let me also talk about some really interesting research that was done across a handful of teams at Microsoft. So what do some developers say? The TLDR here is that productivity is personal. For many folks, they report that productivity hadn't changed or it had even improved. 
between 62 and 68 percent. However, a bunch of folks also said that they felt less productive, 32 to 38 percent of them. Many folk, many of that group over time report that it got better, maybe indicating that they found ways to accommodate. But we also see that people are affected differently, right? This is based on their work styles, challenges, uh, benefits that they face. So when we dig into it, what do we see? When we look at the benefits, the good things about working from home, there's a lot that's reported. So I'm gonna read out a few of these, right? So things like less time on a commute, spending less money, having flexible work hours, being closer to family, having more weight, uh, breaks, having better work-life balance, um, having more efficient meetings, having more physical activity, um, reduced health risks, having better focus time. These things were all reported by folks in this work from home study. Uh, this was done by Ford et al. Now, interestingly, when they ran some statistics on this to see what was statistically significant, the things that were most significant were things like better focus time, less distractions, um, although many of them were significant, things like more time to complete work, better work-life balance, a better work environment. Now, when we look at the bad things about working from home, many things are listed, including missing social interactions, uh, fewer breaks, lack of a routine, less physical activity, Remember before, more physical activity and now less physical activity. So we can really see how it's individual and personal. Before it was a better work from home environment, now we're hearing a poor work from home environment, right? Now, when we look at uh, what is statistically significant, the things that are, have the strongest negative impact on productivity are things like missing social interactions, more distractions and interruptions, where for the other group, having less distractions was actually helpful. Uh, a lack of motivation is really tough for folks. The fact that it's really difficult to communicate with colleagues now and lack of childcare is difficult. So we can really see how it depends on the person, right? There is no one answer. It really is a balance between folks and, and between people. So to kind of summarize this, we can see how the good is that in some cases, in many cases, we've seen improved productivity for some definition of the word productivity. We can, some folks have seen better punctuality. We're not racing between meetings, but then we're also sitting at a desk. Uh, earlier, it was reported less attrition, although we're definitely seeing differences now, right? Uh, the bad is that there were fewer promotions, right? So for managers out there, watch for this. Out of sight can really be out of mind. Um, the bad is also is that workplace stress really can compound for those with younger children and for the, uh, with those for whom childcare is a concern. The worrisome, I would say, is that there are fewer breaks and longer work days. That can be really hard. So uh, there was another study done by uh, Butler and Yaffe uh, on daily gratitude. So they did a daily diary study at scale. So. Uh, started with dozens, uh, ended up with a few less than this, but it went on for about a year, I wanna say. Asking them every single day at first and then several days a week eventually uh, for a daily uh, diary and gratitude reflection. 47% of folks who participated said that it really positively impacted their well-being. They also found that flexibility with time and family were bright spots and that resources for mental health were important to them. Some of the daily challenges that they faced uh, people reported that coping with working from home was kind of tough, right? 41% reported no improvement, but 61% did report some improvements over time. Uh, people reported feeling overworked. It was really kind of difficult to motivate, find uh, motivation and focus, and that physical and mental health were a struggle. So given that, I don't want to leave us on a downer, what are some things that we can do ourselves? I want to make sure that I can leave us with some tips that we can do all by ourselves, right? So Joel talked about tiny wins for our products or our teams or our companies. What are some tiny wins that we can do for ourselves? So at GitHub earlier this year, Irini and I ran a study looking at tiny wins for developers. We called it the Good Day Project. So the study was, you know, what makes a good day and what can we do to have a good day more often? 
more predictably, more reliably, based on tiny little wins. So here's the deets. It was based on a holistic concept of productivity using the space framework. We focused on the individual. All of this data was for developers, not for managers. It was for us. It's all for us. And the goal was to have quick and easy measures and give us some actionable signal. Okay, I just said it was based on the space framework. What does that even mean? So the space framework is a measure of productivity, right? But more holistic measure of productivity based on five dimensions. So S is satisfaction and well-being, right? So it's how fulfilled, happy, and healthy we are. P is for performance. It's an outcome of a process. So it could be quality, uh, could be performance of a system, um, activity. So this is what we often think about, right? So this is a count of activity or an output. Uh, communication and collaboration. So it's how people talk and work together. Uh, and then efficiency and flow. So this is doing work with minimal delays and interruptions. So we really wanted to think about this in a holistic way. So uh, the space paper has been published in ACM if you want to go check it out. So we use this space framework. So the Good Day project was a quick check that you know half of our participants did at the end of the day, half of them did twice a day. And they did it for a couple weeks. So to capture space quickly, we asked questions like, how was your work day? I worked with other people. It was kind of like some of the time, all the time, most of the time. My work was interrupted. How many meetings did you have today? And today I felt most productive, uh, you know, in the morning, in the afternoon, kind of we gave them uh, time of day buckets, or I felt least productive in these time buckets. And then we also matched this to their uh, GitHub activity. Everyone opted in. Uh, we made sure that they understood that their data would only be for them. It would never be shared with anyone else. And we gave them example reports. By the way, the full instrument is available online. If you kind of Google the Good Day Project, and again, the, the slides will, will point you to it. Uh, and you can take a look at what a sample report looks like as well. So here's what we found. Here's some of our stats. Finding flow is key, and interruptions are a drag, right? So minimal or no interruptions give developers an 82% chance of having a good day, where they decided what a good day was, right? Is it awesome or is it terrible? Interruptions spread throughout the day give you only a 7% chance of having a good day. So there we go. Let's try to find a way to minimize some of our interruptions. Here's what else we found. Meetings are both awesome and terrible. It just kind of depends on what kind of meeting it is. So collaboration is a key enabler of good work, right? Connecting with people, having one-on-ones, that can really help us feel connected and it can help us debug and troubleshoot and find good ways. Too many meetings can be a huge blocker though. Going from two to three meetings per day reduces our chances of making progress on our goals by 60%. So we can really take a careful look at what our days look like and if a meeting is really important or not. Now, what else did we find? A two minute daily reflection. It's about how long this quick, quick check, quick quiz took. It can really help improve our days. Developers really liked this quick check at the end of the days. They found it was a really nice wrap up, kind of a nice block at the end of their day. By the way, this echoes that daily gratitude study. Now, as I mentioned, you can go check out this study online. So, Let's also think about what comes next. What does, what does this mean for the future of development? What does this mean for productivity? Now, I think what we should all be doing is asking some important questions, right? How do new tools help us be more productive? What does productivity mean? And when we say productivity, let's not just think about lines of code. Listen, we already know that's a trash metric, but also things like commits, pull requests, counts that are easily automatable, easily gamed, but these holistic metrics, right? What does it mean for things like satisfaction, well-being, performance, communication, collaboration, efficiency and flow? How does it help us collaborate with others? How does it help us find efficiency, maximize flow? 
How does it help us reduce friction in our work? How does it help us automate away the things that are repeatable and mundane and help us find more space to solve new problems? Let's help us focus on new work. What is even productivity when these traditional measures no longer apply? What does it mean when we can create and use and leverage new tools to do our work better and faster? How can we think about reducing harm? What does this mean in our new world? One question that I'm really excited about is how can we expand our definition and our conceptualization of what it is to be a developer and an engineer and a tester and an SRE? How do low-code and no-code tools create new opportunities for more people? Because then we can ask better questions. We can create better solutions. But also, what does that mean for new challenges? Technical debt is real. How can we solve technical debt? What does technical debt mean when maybe we can't even see the code that we make? How do we test this code in new ways? And how can we invite these new developers and these new engineers and these new SREs into helping us solve these new problems in really novel, interesting ways? I'm super, super excited about this. And how can we change the way that we educate folks? Because by the way, we need way more people to help us solve these problems. And then really bringing this around because this is really what it's about. How can we rethink well-being? Because when we can work anywhere, we can work anywhere. What does it mean to have boundaries? What are our boundaries for work? What are our boundaries for play? When we really love our work, how do we stop work? How do we invite people to work? And how do we invite people from work <laughs> when we know we're looking out for everyone? And what is next for all of us in this realm? So thank you all for joining me. I'm so excited to hear what you think about all of this because I'm excited for what's next and I want all of us to be thinking about what's next. So here's what we've talked about today. We talked about how DevOps helps us and it helps us do things better in more sustainable ways. We've talked about how productivity is personal. We talked about tiny wins for our companies and our products, but especially for us. And we talked about the future of productivity and well-being. And I also want to note that we should be I hope, keeping our eyes open. I've got a few really exciting projects coming up, and the one that I think is probably coming up next is the next uh, State of the Octopus report from GitHub. And the thing that's really exciting for me is that we have combined both uh, this amazing developer data uh, from GitHub as well as survey insights. So we've really combined the two for the first time, and I think it's going to be amazing. So thank you so much, and super excited for uh, all the rest of the talks and catching up on a couple of the ones that I missed this morning because it was so early and I didn't have my day at Coke yet. Thanks so much, everyone. <laughs>